Welcome to Interfaith Dialogue. My name is Chantel Smith, and today my guest is Pastor David Doncor, and he's a pastor for All Nations Full Gospel Church. I'd like for you to tell me about yourself and about the church and how you got involved with it. All Nations Full Gospel Church is a faith-based church, started in 1986. Uh, the founder's name is Dr. Samuel Doncor. Uh, it's my father, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, the church has... Uh, uh, all nations flavor to it where we invite all types of people from different nations, communities, and backgrounds. And so the church has uh, spread its wings outside of the country of Canada and is in seven different continents around the world and right now has approximately 86 churches and over 10,000 members worldwide. Where is it? Like all Nations Full Gospel Church uh, headquarters is actually in the, the Great City of the Toronto, the GTA. It is at 400 and steals. And so through that, we have branches, 25 branches throughout the country of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, one church in the United States, um, several in Africa, mm -hmm. in the countries of Ghana. We also have churches in Liberia, mm -hmm. uh, South Sudan, which gen uh, recently opened up. And as well, we have uh, a church um, in Norway and England as well. Yeah. We're also in Jamaica, and we are also in Costa Rica as well. I know you're um, building churches in Ghana right now. Yes. Um, so can you tell me about that and like how you got started with it and why you decide to do that? Well, All Nations Full Gospel Church as well has, um, as it's been building churches and getting to the community, um, the church also started an NGO in 1997 called All Nations International Development Agency. And so we work with sponsoring kids. Right mm -hmm. now in Ghana, mm -hmm. we have over 295 kids that we're sponsoring. And um, we're paying for their school fees, oh, make sure wow. we feed them, uh, helping orphans as well. So as the churches go into the communities, they also help in making sure that not only are people's souls taken care of, but their bodies as well. So what inspired you to do all of this? Honestly, growing up in church, a lot of people have a lot of um, uh, some of the negative things to say about PKs and, you know, sometimes they're um, overindulged, sometimes they're spoiled. And uh, I realized as I was growing up the fact that people and humanity itself just needs help. And so um, God's not waiting for anyone to be perfect, but mm -hmm. we can all lend a helping hand. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I realized that the young people like myself, a lot of them were going the wrong path in the wrong way and they needed people to be an example and that as you help people, you see people's lives change, it is the most fulfilling thing that can happen in your life. So that inspires me, the young, uh, dealing with the middle aged and the old, and seeing how best we can help and serve in the community of Toronto. The first time I ministered was in, um, when I was 18. So I've been doing this for approximately about 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, have, we also, I've also been involved in um, other things in the community. So from the time I was about 10 years old, so I've been doing it for over about 20 years now. What do you like most about your work? Well, one thing I love about my work is I love helping people and seeing people come from different backgrounds and, and different situations and seeing God do something in their lives. That's nice. And so that is something that really motivates me to continue forward. Yeah. Why, do you, why is it so important to you? I think the most valuable com commodity we have in this world is lives. And um, yeah. being able to help a life is the best thing um, that one can do. And so seeing people's lives change, families, um, communities, is something that continues to motivate me. And this is why I do what I do. How do you keep up with all of this? Like, well, you're, like you're a leader, you know? Well, definitely one thing is that I'm part of a great team. And uh, all of them on the team have the same goal in mind as we work with our leader, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Doncor. And what we're doing is that we are building churches, but as we do, yeah. we're working in our communities. And so um, sponsorship has happened from the uh, donations of the members. And also people have given um, 
clothing, material, time, and we have a lot of professors and people of different um, educational backgrounds in our church. Yeah. And so they give their time and some they do adjunct teaching. And so this is how the church works together hand in hand with the community. And so we're doing the same thing here in Toronto where we have our NOAA program. And so our NOAA is our outreach program and we uh, feed out the city of Toronto, 3,000 mm -hmm. families in the church and all nations here in the city. Tell me about your capacity buildings in the community. Well, our capacity in the, in the community is that we have great members, great people that love people in the community. And what we do is that um, people reach, they volunteer, they go out, um, they give of themselves, they sacrifice of themselves their time, they help people with their children, yeah. they help people in different capacities. And so when people feel that they're loved, that's how we have more people coming to our churches and more people then becoming like that and helping more people in the community. Mm. So what are your challenges? Do you have challenges while you're doing all of this? Definitely. Yeah. Um, we know that we have um, within certain communities because our churches are all nations church. Mm -hmm. So we have um, different from people from all over the world. And so sometimes you have culture clashes <laughs> and then you also have a generational gap uh, between some of the young and the old. Yeah. And so people have, uh, they come to this country, they have their kids here as immigrants, mm -hmm. and they have a situation where they're Eastern thinking and their kids are raised in the West, mm -hmm. and this sometimes becomes a challenge. Uh, other challenges that we face sometimes is the ability to continue to expand mm -hmm. and definitely take some finances and resources to do so. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there's always a limited number of resources um, you can have to really do everything that you wish you can do. Mm -hmm. But um, God has been faithful in helping us, and so um, those are challenges. And then sometimes we have uh, situations where young people also find themselves in very sticky situations, and that can be a challenge as well. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Chantal Smith. Thank you to the audience for watching, and until next time.